Hey there. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Let's see if we actually get people to join in on the meeting today. Hopefully. Oh, I think you're new in the waiting room um so i'll make you the host it's automatically recording um and then the architects i think are going to join and they might be able they might need to share their screen and just like show you the layout and stuff um okay. if you're good with doing that too if they need to right no that yeah that's great because i was actually um told, i was going to ask you if you had the most recent layout so if they're going to be on that would be great Yep, they should be on and they should be able to share it if you don't mind letting them share their screen. Um, and I think Michael will be a co-host when he joins too, so he might be able to help share their screen as well. Okay, sounds good. Perfect, I will make you a host and you can let the rest of your committee in. Great, thank you. Yep. Evening, Katie. Hey, how are you? Very good, and you? Good, thank you. Is it snowy up there right now? No. No? No, it's just going to be a couple inches of wet slush. Not going to get anything. That's heavy. Hello. Hi, Cesar. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. <sighs> How's the snow over there? Cesar, an unexpected guest. Good to see you again. <laughs> Snow's doing pretty good up here. It's just slush and it's, it's light and slushy. Oh. I don't David? Yes. I got a obituary, George O. Jenks, the third, from Pocasset. George who? O. Jenkins. George O. Jenkins. Oh. The third. Yeah. Obituary. Huh. Yeah, I knew he was down there. I uh, I hadn't heard from him in years. Eighty-seven. Wow, he's up there. I'll get it to you sometime. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I now I remember you did give me a call, and I just things been busy. Mom, mom's in the hospital again. Oh no. Yeah, just uh, it's minor. It's just a tune-up. Uh, he uh, kind of self-imposed uh, high blood pressure. She gets worried about stuff, and it just kind of snowballs and gets out of control. And, before you know it, she's over the edge with a high blood pressure, so. Yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> I'm not that way yet. <laughs> Come join us. No thanks, in time, in time, I'm sure. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, I don't know why I don't see myself, but. Well, we can see you. You're there. Turn the lights on. Yeah. Huh. Okay. It looks all black. That's if it works for you, that's good for me. A few more minutes for a few people to show up.
You're good. Hi, Kimberly, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How about you? Good. Okay. Um, so it looks like we're at uh, six o'clock, so we'll start the meeting. Well, let's see if I have anyone else coming in. So welcome everyone. Um, it's nice to see everyone. Good to, it, it looks like Michael just showed up. Hi, Michael, how are you? I am well, hey, Steve. Perfect time, we're just about to start. Good. second and all right so um once again we're starting off at six o'clock six o'clock 601 right now um welcome to everyone to this meeting um i think uh first announcement that i want to have for this meeting is um uh, an introduction to our newest um uh, member of the historical commission matt casey um welcome hey, thank you very happy to have um, have new blood on the commission. Uh, I don't know if you want to just say quickly say a few things uh, about your uh, your background. Uh, I've uh, been interested in history for as far back as I can remember. Uh, worked at a couple of museums. Been active in living history. Um, so, um, but yeah, I'm happy to to be here and um, yeah. Excellent. Welcome. Yeah. No. Um, Glad to have you part of this, and I think it's definitely going to be. Um, there's a, we've been a very busy uh, commission recently with the um, with a lot of projects, the High Street Dam, the Memorial Building, um, a few others. Um, so your help is um, greatly appreciated. Um, And um, so I guess um, we'll start off with um, the citizens com open forum citizens comments. I don't, is there anyone that any citizens that have any comments that they want to bring up prior to our, the start of our meeting? Um, see none. I guess we'll get. Um, well, first off, we'll start. Um, First item on the agenda is the um, is the um, letter of support for the memorial building. Um, fortunately, we have um, uh, Cesar and um, and Jeff and um, from uh, who are from Tape who are working on the uh, project, and um, Jim and Michael. So um, is um i guess we'll start off with the um do we want to do, does anyone have a copy of the um want to share their screen showing the most updated layouts cesar do you need uh i need to, I, to do that yeah i need you to i need to get the um uh, hold on yeah i'll need that too Oh, there you go. There we go. Okay. Oh. Let's see. If I... Um. I... My apologies. I had it and. <laughs> So we're all learning a new okay. way. Right. 
Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, so let me just start uh, with this presentation uh, about the Bridgewater Memorial Building that, as you know, we have been trying to do something for a while and we have tried different different things. And I think the, right now we are in a, in a good in a good point. So um, original building, you all know about it, uh, built in 1882, architects, Walsh and Tilden. Um, this uh, is an excerpt from that, those drawings that are in the, the the working drawings that actually they are in the archive. This is a photo of the building taken probably in the 70s or 80s. That is what is in the mass historic archives. This is a photograph of most recent. This is what it looks like probably a few months ago or maybe a year ago. And these are all the views of the existing building. Uh, you see some a wooden deck that kind of a, tried to get a, an ax, handicap access on that back door. Um, the side facade, you see the existing, the original windows, but they, they, they have this mishmash of storm windows that some of them are uh, white, some of them are aluminum color. The upper portion doesn't have anything. So it's a single pane of glass, not very energy efficient. In the interior, um, I, I have said this every time that we meet, I think that um, this building has remained in, in decent shape, despite the fact that it has not been occupied for some time. And it looks the, the wood trim and everything looks in good shape. Um, the paint, some areas are peeling off, but overall it, it looks good. Um, and the flooring is the wood that is tired, but I'm, I'm sure that we can uh, refinish it. The basement is a basement. <laughs> it's unfinished, it has a lot of stuff and everything is exposed, it has no ceiling. There is one room on the side that it, it was sort of finished a little bit more over the years, but beyond that it is very utilitarian concrete floor. It has the, the boiler and some, it's, it's, it's a basement. So a uh, general summary of the proposed work. Uh, Right now, as I said, the building is not occupied. So what is being proposed right now is to utilize this available space to house the offices, workspaces for the DPW department heads and the staff persons on the main floor. That of course requires an upgrade on mechanical systems, improving the thermal performance of the windows, proper plumbing facilities for the occupants. Um, as part of this project, we also want to restore the structural integrity of the front entrance and steps and landings. And in, in doing that, also provide universal access to the building. The original steps you saw in the photograph, and you are familiar with the building, they are all cracking and separating and in bad shape. Um, Another important point of this project is to establish a venue for the display of historic artifacts. And in the, then uh, adapt the, the, the basement to create a storage areas in support of the departmental functions on the lower level. So ADA compliances, universal access, uh, we are proposing having, um, there's an existing parking space in the back of the building. We're going to improve uh, that space and make it, uh, make a direct connection to the front of the building in a, in, in a accessible way. And the main entrance will be compliant and 
We also provide access to accessibility to the lower level, which doesn't exist right now. And in, we also are proposing compliant toilet facilities on the lower level, lower floor. This is an image of the building generally is divided into three areas, basically two flanking rooms in, and the main hall. Um, this is for comparison, what we are proposing, uh, we are planning to, for the most part, uh, keep everything as intact as possible and just define areas using furnishings for the new occupants. Uh, this image shows you the lower level and with the new accessible toilets, fully compliant and accessibility via a lift. And the large area that you see in this plan that uh, will have shelving and things of that nature for one person to work on sorting the documents that go into this area of storage. Um, this is, so we're gonna start talking about uh, with the improvements on to the site first. And for that, we have uh, major and minor changes to the building. Um, we, we have two categories, minor in nature, major in alterations. Um, major alterations require a review and approval of the Massachusetts Historical Commission, which um, we, we, this is, um, so, we, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, landscape to the front of the building. So the, the changes that we're proposing to the front of the building, I briefly mentioned that adding slope walkways to, to, to make them ADA compliant ramps. Um, we are also shaping the front entrance landscape but, um, to make it symmetrical to the building. And we are removing the existing walkway to the front of the building and we are replacing it with a new paver entry plaza. So here you see the main entry, the main facade um, of, the, of the building, the existing steps in this area, which are in relatively bad shape. What we're proposing to do is create, um, we do this work, but also provide a new handicap accessible ramp. And it goes in this direction. It starts from the from the sidewalk, and it brings someone to the to the front vestibule of the building. Um, for symmetry, as I mentioned, and this is important in a building of this nature, uh, we are adding a knee wall in this area that matches the one that is necessary to do the the ramp on the opposite side. And this is the front entrance that we will provide a, a new, we'll replace what is there right now, which is all loose and broken with a new paver entry plaza. Um, now that, that, that is what was proposed sort of generally to the front. Um, prior to the building. Now, uh, the front and the side of the building, we're proposing to remove the existing granite steps that lead to the front door and replace them with new um, concrete steps with granite treads. Uh, we had discussed a full depth granite tread um, if the budget can afford that, but it will have at least uh, a granite component to it. Uh, the existing steps that are right now that they are granite, we plan to remove them and repurpose them to create the top landing of this, this new platform that, at the entrance. And we were also adding a slope walkway to replace the existing sidewalk. Uh, as you can see here uh, in, in this blue area, we are proposing new steps and repurposing of the existing 
pieces of stone to create the top landing that leads to the main entrance of the building. Um, this is on, on the side of the building, on the uh, east side. Uh, right now we are improving the connection back to the parking space that is currently there, which we're going to refurbish. We're gonna clean it up the area, striping, painting, putting new signage for that spot. And then it will be a handicap accessible path that leads to the, to, to the front of the building so that on the concept of universal access, everybody takes the same main entrance. Um, this is uh, an early uh, rendering uh, of superimposed on the building, a photograph of the building, conceptually of the ramp um, and slope uh, walkway. Um, this is an image um, computer generated. We're still working on it, um, but is again, conceptually, it gives you an idea of what we're proposing, the connection to the back to the parking in the back and how the, the, the two ramps coming from the street and coming from the back of the building, they meet at an intermediate point and then they move up to the top landing into the main entrance. Um, this is a, a view from the coming the other way. Um, so those are the basic um, changes that we're proposing to the exterior. The ones that we're proposing for the interior, we're creating a um, floor opening to install a new wheelchair lift. And we are removing and replacing the existing stair that leads to the lower floor with a code compliant stair in a new, new configuration and a larger floor opening. And so on, on the right, you see the new lift that we are proposing. And this is the this is the the, the the most appropriate way to do this in a, in a in a in a way that is the least impactful to the plan, relatively small scale, although it's sufficient for uh, one of the large wheelchairs. And and this is an alternative to having an elevator, which probably is it's, it's just not viable in this building. So we're taking advantage of the code allowances for a historical building that uh, while we can make it uh, handicap accessible, we can make it uh, accessible ADA um, on both floors, we can still do it in a, in a way that doesn't have a huge impact on the basic layout of the building. On the left, you see the stair in the same location as the existing stair. There's one currently there. It's too steep, it doesn't meet the code we are um, reconfiguring the state and making it compliant. Uh, this is uh, um, another rendering that shows uh, a view on the left, the, the nature of the stair very, being very light, trying to maintain the opening to the windows, you see, so that they, they, they don't get in the way of the views. Um, artifacts in display cases located in the center of the room that also act as a buffer zone to the more private zone of the, the, the offices. So it's like an all office open plan, but at the same time, we're using the furnishings to define the zones. And, and at the same time, using those pieces of furniture to, to make them functional in terms of um, the historical relevance of the building. Uh, this is a view of the other angle showing the lift. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are selecting something uh, that has the least amount of impact to the, to the space, um, but is functional and they are available materials um, for this lift, as you can see, uh, uh, we're trying to mimic the wood that is already there in the wainscoting and try to blend it in. As you move down to the lower level to where the toilet rooms are, either by lift or by stair, 
they communicate at the same point in the lower level, this uh, lower lobby, um, so that is uh, the vertical circulation is cohesive. In addition to those more significant changes, um, we are talking about minor changes, as I said, paving, striping, and signage associated with the making of an ADA compliant parking space. Um, you remove the existing wooden deck and the lift that is, and repair and structurally stabilize the side stair and the landing. Um, we are going to put a removal entry grill so that uh, it, it's, it can be removed so that it maintains the visual, it, it still allows you to see the original pavers at the main vestibule entrance. So um, that's why we have this removal entry grill. Um, repainting of previously painted interior surfaces and repairs and improvements to the electrical power distribution system uh, repairs to the lighting system. Here you can see this image uh, on the left, uh, the existing steps that a deck was uh, put over them to work with the lift on the outside. We are proposing now that we have a fully handicapped accessible or, uh, entrance in the front. We will be eliminating that deck, we will be eliminating that lift and we will be ref refurbishing, repairing the existing steps. And on, on the right are the plans as that go with that, that image. Uh, some additional minor changes, uh, installation of removable floor coverings, a walk of mat at the, at the entrance vestibule, Removal and replacement of lower level partitions in, the, in new configurations. As I said, we are using dividers and furnishings to define uh, the different zones without trying to interfere with actual solid uh, construction partitions that would change the character of the space. So it's mostly treated as, as I said, furnishings within the larger space. Uh, reusing, repurposing of existing HVAC, plumbing and electrical system components supplemented with new equipment as required. Adding um, partial high glass and wood partitions that can be removable, so reversible. And we are also refurbishing the existing windows where necessary and replacing existing storm panes with higher performance energy panels. Um, using the same techniques that we did at the academy building. And here you can see uh, what these are. We are adding um, on the top page this um, low height partitions so that you still maintain the view of the windows and the feel of the entire space while, while defining a zone to the front being the more of the where the art, historical artifacts would be. And in the back is more of the, the, the offices. And down here you see, as I mentioned before, uh, there's a different assortment of uh, storm windows. Some have, some don't have it. Uh, some of the windows themselves, the original windows are in, oh, I went too far. <laughs> Um, the, the, some of them will need some repair and others are uh, just will have to be scraped and painted. Um, again, similar to what we did in the academy building, we did an inventory of each window and what needed to be fixed. And then to add energy efficiency to it, we add this thermal panel to the front of the window so that it creates this pocket of air that provides the insulated aspect of the window, as well as it provides protection to a wood window that is historical. 
So this becomes more sacrificially to where to break or something. And that is sort of, um, so if, if I went too fast or not, but that, <laughs> that is um, basically the, um, what we're proposing right now for, for this project. No, I appreciate that. Um, it, committee members, is there anyone that wants to, has, has some uh, um, comments? Yeah, I would, Steve. Yes. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the interior walls have uh, wood paneling, wood wainscoting. What's going to happen to that? One of the interior, those are in the side rooms, right? Side rooms. There's no wood wainscoting in the uh, main room in the back. No, no. There are some cabinets, so the shelves that oh. we will probably refurbish or uh, as part of the, um, the the scope of the work. But there's no wainscoting. The, the one that does exist is in, in in very nice shape. I think that at this point. Um, that and the fireplaces and all the ornamental wood will just clean it up if necessary, but we're not planning to do much. We're trying to keep all that intact. Okay, is there an alternative to the uh, wrought iron railing? Uh, either uh, eliminating that using wood, uh, with a, a wood component or uh, uh, something with some scroll work. I mean, that straight stack design doesn't go with the building. Yeah, there are opportunities to do different things with the railing. I think that we pick that as sort of more like representative of what we were trying to do, which is to, to avoid what they have right now is literally a knee wall, solid knee wall. We're trying to open it up, make it as transparent as possible to maintain the volumetric effect of the space. But yes, it could be a little bit more, uh, if it were wood, just by the nature of the material structurally, will it will be less transparent, but it could be wood, yes. Uh, either wood or, or uh, wrought iron with some design to it rather than a stack straight lines. Okay. Yeah, as I said, they, this was more mostly representative uh, of yeah. the concept. Okay. Yeah, but I would just interject relative to design intent, um, not to detract from the things that are truly historical artifact. You don't want to put something into the building that causes one confusion about is that historical? Is that is that something new that was added? So we want to just be careful about how far we go down the path of replicating something that might have been in the building, but would never, was never in the building, perhaps. If we had a clear idea of what the railing was like on a historic stair, then we should probably just replicate it. But without that awareness and information that we created something that looked like it was a historical recreation, then we would be confusing what real history is. Um, so we have to, I think, you know, sort of walk carefully between um, being respectful of the history that's there and also being uh, creating any sort of confusion about what is real and what is um, what is real history and what is faux history. We don't want to infuse anything that is so rich with actual real history practically unretouched <laughs> um, and all this aspect from the from the magnificent woodwork that's in those two front rooms. Um, to the exterior masonry detailing, the whole thing is just uh, a little gem, and uh, we have to be careful about how how we how we treat that. Um, so, I don't. I'm not. Hopefully, I don't sound like I'm being dismissive, but I just want to say we should we should look at developing the railing with an eye towards not accidentally creating a false impression. I I th I think that can be done. I understand your point. Uh, Great. That's well, very we'll, we'll, we'll come up with a development of the design and share it with you and see how it resonates with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the knee walls in the front of the building, is any thought been given to uh, brick facing on them to maybe just uh, to take some of the stackness out of all that concrete? 
uh, we had entertained different materials, but I think that um, we did talk about brick before and we were concerned that um, in contrast with the brick building that was gonna be, um, again, trying to, it, it, it tied too much to, to, to the building and not to the landscape. Our intent was to tie it to the landscape, um, avoid the, that's why we are using uh, pavers, um, non-brick pavers at the entrance and the granite walls and all that. So yes, we did talk about brick, but uh, in the end we decided that um, not, not to use that material for those walls. I also just wanted to open up comment at, um, allowing comments from people who are on the ad hoc committee for the memorial building. So that, that would be Carlson is on the um, on on the line as well. So um, I think he has a question. Thank you. I got it myself unmuted here. Uh, very nice presentation. I think we've made huge, huge improvements. A quick thing for Kim and Michael. Uh, are we at a point where we could apply for green community money for the energy efficiency upgrades in the building? You, you, you can hold that for a minute. Um, did you guys look at the 2011 four building study that identified a number of uh, uh, things that need restoration? I can't remember if we already did that, but one that really bothered me was some kind of a bulge in that back wall of the building. That, that they thought might be um, at risk of breaking at some point. If you haven't looked at that four building study from 2011 uh, I, and we haven't done those repairs, I think we should take that into consideration. Um, third point is, has the historical, uh, uh, the uh, a certificate of appropriateness been applied for with the historic district? Four is, uh, I guess, I guess I may have misread the uh, uh, preservation. I thought all minor and all major uh, things inside and outside had to be approved by the Mass Historic. Uh, and the last point is more for the CPC to consider. Uh, do we have a specific grant agreement in place uh, or will we get that in place once we get these final designs done? That's a lot, but that, that's the kind of thing I need to hear about. Okay, so I know that the first one was for me, Carlton. What was the first one again? I'm sorry. It's a green community energy. Oh, yeah. uh, so are we in a place to apply for energy subsidies? Um, I, I think we already installed, um, uh, with green communities money, we already installed what, what we have there. Um, and I, that we're planning on reusing. So I don't, I don't see any additional uh, application for green communities funding um, there's, there are potential other funding mechanisms, but I don't think green communities, um, is, uh, is on the table at this point. Um, so that was one. Oh, thank um, you. I, I just, I remember that we paid for the, uh, current, but I thought I understood that something was going to be done interior, uh, with energy upgrades or something. Is it just a relocation of that one external, um, unit? I think, well, Cesar can answer that better than I can, but I think the, the yeah. units, the exterior units are planned to be um, combined and, and hidden from, from view. Uh, but uh, Cesar, is there anything else on, on the energy side that would you think would be uh, applicable yeah. for green communities? Uh, you're correct that the equipment, there's some equipment there that is not that old and, and our engineers were already there and when they did their the study and definitely we want to use that equipment and supplement with some units just for ventilation. So that's one thing and they are already efficient, <laughs> energy efficient. The adding of, um, there's also some lighting that is energy efficient in the building. Um, any, any new plumbing fixtures will be water efficient. And uh, so anything that, any new installations will be to today's code 
So by definition, they are efficient already. <laughs> and so we are use, we're reutilizing uh, what is already there and anything new will be supplement what is already there. Oh, oh and we are also adding insulation to the, to the attic. So that's really good to hear. And I, I agree with all of that, but I think those kinds of things might be eligible through green community. I just don't know if we're at the point where we can apply for a grant this year. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I can check on that, but, but certainly that's, you know, well, if we can, the, we, we will. And the critical part is the LED street lights. If that project is done, then I think we can, if it's not done, I'm not sure. We, we split that into two phases. The, the first and by far the larger, larger phase is done. So, um, I think that's wrapped up. So it's really a choice of doing the second phase, which is, uh, believe decorative lights, um, or perhaps you know there might be more bang for the buck right now by by looking at uh, this building. So we'll we'll do that. We'll do that analysis. Yeah, I appreciate it. The Energy Committee would love to uh, participate. Excellent. And then I'm sorry, the second one. The, uh, the second? in 2011 we had a four building study done, oh, yeah. and the architects reviewed that and found a number of potential problems with the building. I just can't remember if they were actually repaired or not. I don't recall. I do. I've seen the four building study, um, and I, I just don't recall seeing anything uh, structural on the memorial building. But I'll pull it up and while we're talking and see. Please do. I did send it to Kim in hopes that they would send it to Cesar and his company because uh, I think there's some things that we could fit in there that would be truly restorative. Well, we don't. I mean, I, I can tell you we don't. I mean, as I always say, we don't plan on doing this uh, without doing it right. So to the extent there's any, you know, any structural issue anywhere, that that's that's will be part of, of the uh, program. Yeah, well, let, let's just make sure we add it to the tickler list. Um, the the uh, historical district uh, needs to issue a certificate of appropriateness. Is there a plan to go forward? Uh, the <clears throat> Historic District Commission has looked at it. They've, uh, by consensus at this point, are fine with the design. And, um, and uh, we have completed, we've filled out the certificate or the application for the Certificate of Appropriateness. Um, we are going to file that once we get through the MAAB process to know whether or not uh, the front doors can be uh, essentially retrofitted um, and, and accessible. So the Historic District Commission, and I, this is pertinent to the conversation, obviously, the Historic District Commission was very interested in trying to uh, save the, the current front doors, which are not, um, not compliant, not ADA mm -hmm. compliant. Um, we can make them uh, more compliant with an actuator that opens the doors, both doors. It's, it's roughly a five foot opening in each door is roughly two and a half feet wide. Um, so one door two and a half feet wide does not comply with ADA, obviously, uh, or with accessibility standards. And so uh, the five foot opening more than complies. And so the, the uh, variance request the MAB will be to uh, allow that to be actuator um, uh, activated. And so uh, once we know that answer, we'll go back to the HDC and, and uh, they'll be prepared to vote. And my final question was, when, what are we going to do about making sure the town has a grant agreement in place with the CPC in terms of the details so that we can monitor the project? Before, yeah, before anything, uh, before const any construction takes place, the CPC will have, have a draft of that and be able to vote that. Thank you. Yep. Steve? Yes. Uh, by board, a couple questions or statements I have. Uh, in the malls, they have glass partitions for railings that look pretty good. That might be an option there that would keep the view of the walls with a metal railing to hold the glass in place. We don't have kids running around in there so that nobody will, they still have to have be safety glass, but that would look pretty good. The other thing I've mentioned several times is that there's only one handicapped parking in the back of the building. We have two choices. 
One is purchase the building behind and make that a nice parking place for the staff and so forth. Or two, open a walkway through to the walkway by the library so they can use the library parking lot for visitors that come in that need a place to park rather than on, on the street. That makes more sense than uh, you know, to, to keep the parking uh, in central. But you have to cut the curb to, between the two and make the proper uh, handicap ramp where you come down to the, make the turn to the handicap ramp and cross the driveways. That would, that would also, that, that roadway right there is a private, it, it's a private driveway, correct? Understood, yes. So we'll just have to work with the, uh, the owners of the, uh, the town would have to work with the owners of that lot. An to, uh, an easement? Yes. And I, I, I agree. I think that like um, that would be a, a good solution to have um, the um, extra um, accessible parking. I think with the the one part, the one space um, going forward, I think I, I think that meets the needs of the building. But I agree, we should definitely look into um, the town should look into making an uh, an easement or a, an access from the library parking. There really is no other parking around that space. Yeah, for, for what it's worth, obviously that's, you know, not part of the historic scope, but for what it's worth, um, you know, when when uh, our offices were over there um, and we had to relocate to the library, the basement of the library for a while, um, it was evident, you know, very clearly evident that it would be great to have some sort of improved um, passage there. So it is a private road. Um, the, the owner, of the road has not, uh, generally is not, uh, I don't know, how should I put it, has not been particularly favorable to, to um, you know, access, no. but, uh, but certainly, you know, we'll keep pursuing that because okay. it just makes sense. I mean, honestly, uh, you know, having two access roads, you know, within feet of each other is, is not, a, not optimal by any means, but, uh, but it'd be nice if it could be one road, you know, but we'll, we'll try to fight that battle when it comes along. Great. Um, Matt, I know that you're new, um, new to the commission, but uh, do you have comments that you want to um, bring for, forward from what you saw? Uh, I mean, I, the presentation was great. Um, I like everything about it. Um, I think there have been some concerns that have been brought up that do need to be addressed. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I have any questions off the top of my head at the moment. So, um, but yeah. Um, uh, I have a, Gina is raising her hand out. Um, Gina, you, you can um, ask your question. Sure, first, thanks Steve. First, I'd like to congratulate Matt on his appointment to your commission. I think that's great that he stepped up for that. Um, and also to thank Caesar for such an excellent presentation. Um, I'll keep it real short. I just want to say that I thought the, the, the whole concept that sees the one over tonight, all the changes, I thought they were very good. A um, hundred, at least a hundred percent better than the first time I, I saw the plan a couple of years ago. So I would like to say that, and I think it's great having grown up with that building as a, a library, I think it's great the way it's being kept. So good job. And uh, I think I, what I'd, I'd like to say that once it, like Cesar and um, and Jeff, uh, thank you for your work on this. Um, I think that the display, the the, the interior improvements are like, like what Gina said, vastly improved from what what we first saw. I think that, that having the space open really um, keeps the integrity of the building, um, and I think that we should like, um, we should look at some of the comments that um, that David and um, Bob and and Carlton brought up. Um, and what I'd like to do right now with the committee is um, uh, I want to uh, make a motion to um, uh, take a vote on um, approval of the. Um, 
schematic plans as we've seen right here. Um, Steve, one question? Yes. Uh, it, it may have been left off only because it was, these are just renderings of the future building, but uh, the chimneys and the amelie sphere were missing from those drawings. Are they going to be removed? No, no, we're not removing the, 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 that sphere there. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, if, if it's, it's there, uh, we're not touching that. <laughs> chimneys? It, same thing. I, I think that um, this, the the renderings, we we just didn't render them, but it's no, no intent to, to remove any of that. No. Yeah, that's what I figured. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so the, um, I'd like to move to um, to um, vote for the for the committee to vote on um, supporting the schematic plan so the project can move uh, continue to move forward. Um, so I want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. If we, do I need a, a second to um, to have a, a second to, um, to go forward with the vote? I'll second it, Steve. Okay, David seconds it. Um, we'll have just have a roll call vote. Um, David, I agree. Matt, I agree. And Bob. And uh, I agree, it's a uh, unanimous. Um, the uh, historical commission um, uh, expresses their support for the schematic plans. Um, I appreciate um, the presentation and uh, we'll uh, continue uh, the conversation uh, with uh, regarding like railings or anything. Uh, as a, keep us, keep us um, informed as, as to what's going on. We definitely will. So I appreciate that, and thanks to the committee. We'll, we will um, we will be back to you with with both the railing and uh, and we want to keep you in the loop as the construction uh, gets going. But it uh, thanks for for this piece. The work uh, now shifts back to us, and we have to go through the MAAB process um, and uh, mass historic. But we appreciate that that support. Okay, and I, what I'll I'll be um, sending the uh, letter of support to you tonight. Oh, thank you, Steve. Great. I think that I, I appreciate that. that. I think that was excellent. Um, moving on, we'll, um, we have an update on the McElwain School Project. Um, Matthew Zaylor, yeah, and thank you, Jeff. Jake, thank you, Caesar. Um, Matthew Zaylor from MPZ Development, uh, principal at MPZ Development, is with us. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Cesar. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Hey, everybody. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Good. How's everybody doing? Excellent. Um, do you have anything that you need to um, uh, screen share? Sure. I have some renderings and uh, plans I can share with the group. Sure. Um, but before I start, I can just give a quick intro and um, Steve, thanks for asking us to participate today. I've got my colleague here, uh, Jenny, uh, also joining us um, from Capstone Communities. Um, as some of you know, this is a joint venture between my development company and uh, Capstone Communities. Jason Korb is the principal. Uh, he can't be with us tonight, so I'm going to walk you through what we're up to. Um, We've worked with uh, many of you before. I see some familiar faces here, Bob, David, Carlton, Michael. Kim, um, everybody else, uh, and Steve, of course, and everybody else, it's nice to see you and meet you for the first time. Um, we're really excited about this opportunity to redevelop what is, uh, you know, a historic asset uh, to the community, uh, two of them actually, um, here in, in Bridgewater, um, the McElwain School, which uh, is a beloved asset, as we know from all the folks we've heard from that have either gone there or um, work there or, you know, just are excited to see this building come back uh, from what it, what it is today uh, to something beautiful again. Um, and then, um, and David has been helpful to us since the start of this project about way back in 2017 uh, from the historic commission standpoint by offering support letters for all of our tax credit applications. Um, and so to date, 
we've accrued about 700,000 in state historic tax credits between the McElwain School and uh, 242 Main Street, which is another um, home that we're listing on the National Register, the State Historic Register, um, because it, it you know, contributes to the larger district um, that cre was created, the downtown district, um, a long time ago. Uh, and so, you know, the federal credit will be used on the McElwain and the state credit will be used on the house and the McElwain. Um, so just to orient everybody, for anybody that's not familiar with the project, I'm um, going to share some, um, some items here. We um, I should also say these renderings are a little bit dated, um, generally uh, up to date, but uh, we applied for uh, federal funding and state funding back in February of last year, and we were awarded uh, all of the resources that we need. And now we're working with Michael and his team um, and the CPC um, to close the project. So we're, we, as of kind of a couple hours ago, we just have finished our negotiation with our investor and our, our lender. Um, so it's, uh, it's exciting because we're now able to move the process forward and the goal is to get to a full financial closing. That means we can start construction in May. Um, so that's rapidly approaching, um, COVID and all the other elements, you know, have not been helpful as it relates to, um, moving any construction forward. Um, but we're doing the best that we can. Uh, to continue to push this project forward. So May is our goal to start construction. Um, let me see if I can move this along here. Okay, so just to orient folks, um, you know, Main Street, 250 Main Street is the site of the McElwain building and then 242 Main Street is right next door. We'll be combining the two lots to create what is about three acres. Um, we're preserving the McElwain school and doing a small addition off the back um, that will allow for um, elevator and stair egress to the building. Uh, it's also a good, a nice way to preserve the building in its uh, full glory by not having to put an elevator within the structure itself. So uh, we're excited about that. Um, the historic renovation will um, put 16 uh, units in the school building. Uh, the 242 Main Street will remain uh, three units, but we're making, it's currently three two bedroom units and we're gonna add a bedroom to one of the units. So it'll be two two beds and a three bed. And then we're preserving the barn structure as well for storage and maintenance use. And then at the back of the site, we're doing uh, new construction, uh, 38 units. Um, this is a family development. So it'll have um, a mix of ones, twos and three bedrooms. Uh, the three bedrooms mainly preside in this building, but there are also, there's one in the McElwain and there's one in the 242 as well. Um, and the nice thing about this building is it will be a passive house construction. Um, and so that is a very highly energy efficient um, construction. Um, and it's one of the goals of the Commonwealth to be net zero. I think it's by 2050 or something like that. So. Um, this falls in line with that goal. It'll also have solar panels on the roof of, of this building. We didn't put them on the historic buildings. So MHC doesn't really like that. So stayed away from that. Um, here's a plan of the um, open space. So uh, Bridgewater is committing about $1.3 million in CPA funds to this project. Those CPA funds will go into the three buckets. Um, I don't have the breakdown in front of me, but um, it's largely the affordable housing bucket uh, and then uh, the, some of the open space bucket and then the historic preservation bucket, a little bit out of that one. So you can see we're creating quite a bit of open space here. Um, we'll have this Memorial Plaza for the McElwain. We're gonna do something. We'd like to work with the commission to kind of come up with um, some sort of memorial for this location right here. Um, we talked about, there's a flagpole here. We talked about doing um, some sort of totem uh, or um, an engraved uh, piece. So we still need to work through what that's actually going to say. You know, it could have names of students. It could be um, names of administrators. It, it's, we, we'd really like your input uh, in crafting this. And I'd like to do a follow-up meeting with our designer and maybe some members of the commission to come up with that 
also would like to involve some of the CPC members in that conversation. That's something we talked about some time ago. Um, we're also doing a children's play area over here that will be open to the community. Um, and then, um, you know, the site itself has 93 parking spaces. Um, we have modified this a little bit. Um, our project came in over budget. So we'll be going back with our final plans to the building uh, inspector, as well as um, the ZBA to just show them the minor modifications we made, but we, we modified some walkways and we changed some curbing and we changed some of the plantings. Uh, we had to deal with a large budget um, bust as a result of um, pricing and timing. So, um, and then there's a dog run here for the, the residential communities use. So we can kind of relegate some of that activity to one location so as not to, you know, um, be scattered across the site. Um, I don't have a dog, but uh, I know people that do, and it's nice to have a place to take your dog when you want to go for a quick walk. So um, that's another amenity to the project. Um, here is a uh, rendering of what the new entry might look like. Park on the right, not depicted in this photo, but it's there. Um, Memorial Plaza here. Uh, facade of the McElwain. Um, we're actually turning the front into the back of the building um, and we're maintaining these uh, historic vestibules um, and then adding that new addition that I mentioned to you uh, for circulation and whatnot. Um, and then in the distance here, you can see the passive house new construction in the far back. Um, here's a closer view of that. And then the addition to the left of the rendering um, which will be clad in a material that's uh, newer looking so as not to conflict with the historic nature of the McElwain. And then a, a modern um, interpretation of the new building uh, to give a, a little bit of a, a, some new, new flavor to the site. You know, we don't, again, don't wanna impede on the historic qualities of the McElwain it's, itself. So a nice new uh, fresh looking building in the back another view looking up from the back of 242 Main Street, get a sense of the kind of connection between the two buildings. Um, and then uh, in addition, looking from the side of the new building at the addition of the McElwain. So you can see it's respectful in its nature and uh, preserves the same similar lines as to the McElwain. Um, here's the picture of the building, uh, probably about a year ago, two years ago, still looks pretty much like this. Um, it's actually in pretty good shape. Um, it's got a newer roof, which was something that really benefits the building. Uh, not a whole lot of water has infiltrated the structure. And um, believe it or not, all these broken windows um, are helpful kind of getting airflow in and out of the building. We did board up some of the windows to preserve the interior woodwork a little bit, um, but you know, we having been open for the past 20 years has actually helped the building, not hurt it. Um, and so that's, that's the building today. And then this is just some floor plans to give you a sense of what it looks like. These are two bedroom units here. Um, this is the basement. So this is currently the boiler room. Um, and so we're turning that into two, um, a two bedroom unit and a one bedroom unit. And here's the lobby for this building in the addition um, that has a package room and mailboxes and an elevator um, here to get people up and through the building, make sure it's 100% ADA accessible. Um, you know, moving up through the building, the second floor, um, two bedroom here at the front of the building. These are all two bedrooms and then um, just some renderings. So here's a rendering of the lobby area um, with the package room and the, the mailboxes. Um, and then going into the hallway. Um, this is on the, what I would call the basement level, um, but um, it won't feel like a basement because it has large windows throughout. Um, and then a sample of what the units will look like, the kitchen and bath uh, for the school building. Uh, and then we get into the new construction. Um, so here we have some amenities that'll be um, available to the community. Um, the, so, when we get back to meeting in person, um, it's possible to sign out the community room with the, um, the manager's consent. So you just call the management office and make an appointment and you can 
utilize the community room. Um, there's a restroom and then we've got a fitness center for the, the residents here. And then we'll have on-site property management um, residing in this part of the building. Um, going up the building, it's two ones, twos and threes. Um, these are the different unit layouts. And here's a sample of that community room um, with our interior designers touch. Um, so something kind of newer uh, to complement the historic nature of it, but still keeping with some um, historic type elements. And then uh, some sample unit uh, kitchens and baths from this building, a little bit different than the McKelwain um, layouts. Uh, and then we've got the 242 Main Street house. And so we'll, we'll be taking off all of this aluminum siding, putting on a new roof, um, taking all of the kitchens and baths out, putting in new baths, uh, kitchens, new fixtures, uh, new plumbing, new electrical, and then new heating and cooling systems for this whole building. We'll add a small little bump out here to make this back unit into a three bedroom. And then the barn that we'll be uh, reinforcing it has some structural issues that we're dealing with. And um, we'll take care of those through the redevelopment. Um, and then just, you know, the floor plans of this building. Um, so that's all I have for presentation. Um, I'm happy to answer questions or uh, have a conversation about any questions, thoughts everybody has. So that's about it for me, Steve. All right. No, thank you, Matt. And I think that that's great. And uh, I'm, I know personally, I'm very excited for this project. I think that um, the, um, the progress and what's been made, and I think it really preserves the, the look of the, um, the school while making it, it, it accessible. Um, one thing that I, I, um, promoted this a little bit on the uh, on my uh, historical commission Facebook page and um, this is a uh, kind of something that I don't know how it can happen because of COVID and also because of uh, safety some people um, because it was such a um, brings back memories for a lot of people some people before construction were asking like could there be like a walkthrough could there be something where like people kind of see it before it's less um before it's um, private, uh, kind of like uh, private apartments. I don't know what, I don't know if that's anything that is possible or with what the situation is now, but I don't know, that, that's something that, that, was, that was brought up. Um, that's a great question. Um, people might want to keep their mind's eye of the, the memories they had when they, when the building was <laughs> operational. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to be uh, guessful about it. I, I just say that because um, it's in pretty rough shape in there. Um, and so that does also beg the safety concern associated with bringing folks through. Um, the building is currently owned by the town. Um, we have a purchase agreement with uh, the town for the building. Um, so we'd have to see, you know, when and if that could be made possible. Um, I don't put, mean to put Michael on the spot, but he and I should probably have that conversation and then, um, you know, maybe we can talk about it post closing, um, maybe getting some folks through before we start, but we're gonna start with a vengeance when we get into that building, we've been waiting to get going. So um, I, I more or less wanted to just kind of, kind of verbalize it and just say, say that I asked the question, but I, I, I know in the answer beforehand. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, well, I can open up the, the questions to anyone on the on the committee, any members, anyone on the call right now. Steve, on the, uh, I, I took the historical commission through that building a number of years ago, and uh, there had been a lot of moisture in the building, and as, as Matt said, the broken windows vented it, but uh, it's pretty ugly inside. Uh, I, it would, people are best with the memories that they have of going there as children. They don't want to go in there now because it's it's ugly and scary, peeling paint and everything else. And I'm, I'm glad to hear they were able to save some of the woodwork, or they might be able to because uh, uh, the rest of the building is pretty ugly. So, yeah, there's also presence of mold. So yeah. I, I really, from a safety standpoint, I think it's best left the way it was. Um, we're going to remediate all of those things when we do the redevelopment. We have a um, you know, we'll take out whatever asbestos is there, you know, we'll deal with the mold and the lead paint. Um, so 
but to David's point, I, I, I agree, David, you know, it's, um, it's best left uh, the way people remember, remembered it. And then, you know, the new building will be great. Everybody can come see that when we, when we I like that. Name. Carlson. Yeah, thanks. Um, very good presentation. Uh, it's so exciting to see this going forward. I do believe my wife, who's the current town clerk, did some kind of video walkthrough when the building, not long after the building, but probably maybe five years after it was basically unused uh, as part of a marketing tool for that building. I think cable TV uh, may have that. And I think that would be a really nice uh, way to have those memories uh, visited because <laughs> I agree with the safety issues totally. Uh, the other thing, uh, Matt, is, is I think we told you we have the original bell that was used to call people in and, and my wife and I are carefully archiving it here at our house until you're ready to receive it. That's great, Carlton. I do remember you saying that now, so I'm going to put that on my list, uh, but we would certainly welcome that back into the building. You could put it out on the outside in a nice glass case with it ringing every, you know, eight o'clock every morning. <laughs> I'm sure the residents would love that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bob, do you have any comments, Matt? No, I don't. Thank you. No, I'm good. And um, I, I am also like I, I, I spoke with uh, Gina, who's on, on the call right now. She's a uh, um, chair of the CPC. Uh, Gina, do you have any comments you want to, uh, questions or comments you want to say, uh, give to Matt? I, I, do, I do, Steve, thanks. Matt, first off, thank you for the, the great presentation. Um, I went to school there, as you were showing the pictures, it's like, that was my kindergarten, or actually I didn't go to kindergarten, that was my first grade room, that was my fourth grade room. So I was thinking all the students that could move into there and actually sleep like honest to goodness, instead of just sleeping through classes. But um, all kidding aside, I thought the presentation was great. Um, I know Steve asked if you could be put on our CPC agenda for next Wednesday. Um, I look forward to hearing what the CPC members have to say. We have three of us on here tonight, um, but hearing what the, uh, the whole committee thinks. And I commend you for sticking with the look of the school and not like demolish, well, it couldn't demolish, but changing it completely. Um, I love the, the buildings that are transformed into something useful. So thank you for that, for keeping with the look of the town with it. Thank, thanks, Gina. Nice to see you and uh, meet you. And uh, yeah, I look forward to coming to the CPC. We have um, a lot of work to do as it relates to getting to a closing, but you know, um, all of the requirements of the CPC will be accounted for, um, you know, as we get to, you know, that point and uh, we'll put the restrictions on that we discussed um, and we'll work with Michael's office to ensure that happens. Um, Great, thank you. Thank you. That, that, that's really important, uh, Matt. And, and cause I was thinking, do we have a, a uh, a grant agreement with you guys. I don't think we have that. We need to develop that because that will help define what you're going to do, what we're going to measure and monitor for. Um, so, uh, and we have a, a person that can help us write that grant uh, agreement. She'll be on, she's our consultant and she'll be on the phone call, phone call, the Zoom call next Wednesday. So I think that's a really good next step. Yeah. And I, just to just to let everybody know that, you know, there's a lot of state financing here. So there will be uh, mass docs, which is the, the form. Um, I'm getting into the weeds now. I don't mean to do that, but I, it's, they basically have a set of form documents with a deed restriction and a number of elements that will make it a lot easier for the CPC's requirements to be met um, through these state approved documents. And they're really fantastic. They're they're user friendly and um, you know, the attorney that is assigned for the state will be sure to make sure that you know, everything that the CPC needs and wants is incorporated um, in that documentation. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a great tool. 
I think that's a great topic for you to discuss a little bit in more depth with the CPC when we meet. Happy to do I'm that. I'm vice chair, by the way. Great. I appreciate, I really appreciate the presentation, Matt. That, that, that was great. And I, I think uh, what I had, um, I think you and I had discussed earlier, I think this is a great opportunity for um, maybe get some pub publicity for not only the, 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 the projects, but for the town like, being a historical site. Um, I think getting that, getting the word out as to um, when this starts, the uh, construction starts, I think this is a good, this will be a good um, highlight for the town. I, I totally agree, Steve. And I, I think, you know, uh, Bridgewater is leading the way as it relates to this type of project. You know, the, the way that the community has stepped up and supported this project, not only, you know, through the permitting process and through the process, but the allocation of resources um, have been uh, really instrumental in making this project financially feasible, but also um, something that, you know, it's a, it's a true public private partnership. So we've really enjoyed the relationship we've had with the community and we could look forward to continuing that as we get under construction and then into completion and, and stabilization. Excellent, we probably look forward to it as well. Great. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank All you, right. Jennifer. Thank you, guys. Have a great evening. Oh, well. Thanks. <laughs> um, moving forward, um, uh, the next uh, item on the list is the uh, High Street Dam project. And I'm actually going to uh, just uh, um, with uh, Carlton uh, is, is part of the um, the um, is also a representative of the, this um, project. Uh, if you, I don't know if you can actually assist me on um, some of the information that's going on with this. That, that, that would be, that'd be um, helpful. I'm happy to do it, but you can lead and I'll join. Okay. Um, so um, what we've been, uh, what's been going on with the um, High Street Dam and um, bridge removal projects? Um, we have um, the it's let's bring up the information right here. Um, we've had one meeting so far discussing the um, the consultants the um, and we have our, and another meeting coming up. I um, just at the moment right now. I, I I'm, I'm gonna I'm actually if I could pass it off to you, Carlton. I All right. A little <laughs> bit more information than, than I do. I was, I've been. Um, compiling a lot of things and something that's not on the top of my head right now. <laughs> okay, well, this project started back in, well, probably 10 years ago, but in 2017, the uh, State uh, Department of Marine Fisheries and Nature Conservancy did a feasibility study looking at two aspects of the, the High Street Dam, known as the Jenkins Dam. Uh, Bob corrected me. There was a Jenkins owner of that property at one point, and that's when it got the name Jenkins, but it's more popularly known as the High Street Dam. So they did the feasibility study and the feasibility study led to, uh, to uh, a decision. Well, I should say first, the dam is privately owned. And the decision was with the town, the owner of the property, and he decided that the, uh, dam needed to be removed and the state wants to remove it because they want to have better fish, pa fish passage. The fish that live in the ocean come up into fresh water to breed and survive and then go back out to the ocean and eels, that kind of thing. So that, that decision to remove the dam is fait accompli. So then the question, and the state went all through all sorts of studies and I've been involved with commenting on their documents, et cetera, I won't bore you with. Uh, so we've gotten to the point that they're at Michael, correct me, I think they're at close to 90% design uh, of the dam removal. And because the dam's being removed, the very old high street bridge, it, most people don't probably realize you're going over a stone structure that was probably constructed in the 17, early 1700s or before. And it's a very early rendition of dry stone work done by the colonialists uh, as they developed this area or undeveloped it, I guess I would like to say, because uh, my Native American uh, bias is, is, uh, plays heavily here on what we did to those people. Um, 
that said, the process has gotten to the point that the designs are done uh, at some, and, the, and what you have to do when you have this kind of project going forward is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known to me as NOAA, NOAA, uh, has this requirement for historical properties and destruction of properties. They need to go in and make their kinds of assessments. They need to do an area of impact. There are several things that they're done, and we're at that stage right now. And because I believe the historic commission has to is the signer of any things that are agreed to in terms of mitigation. I'm not, I think that's what the, the rule is. Yeah. Uh, and several of us were commenting, uh, Michael in his wisdom, uh, good wisdom decided that we ought to all be at the table. So right now it's CPC, historical commission and the open space committee because there are recreational aspects that could be brought into the game. So that's what we're meeting on and the state is the proponent and they've arranged for us to have these meetings and where we're at right now is trying to put together what we think is appropriate mitigation for re loss, I won't say removal, I would say the loss of those two very historic structures. Uh, not to get into the weeds, but I have submitted uh, comments to the state and as well as to Michael about what my perceptions are in terms of mitigation, which some may, uh, could help restore uh, some of the buildings in that area and others could be increased recreation. So uh, we're gonna have a conversation, I believe it's Monday afternoon on Zoom, and I think it's a public meeting uh, where we will talk about and somehow try to come to a resolution. Uh, I don't think the feds and the state are very willing to put up much money, uh, but I think the history of that property, this is my personal opinion, uh, warrants a significant investment on the state's part because they're the ones that drove the removal and the fact that the bridge has to be replaced. That, that's, if that's not clear, let me know. Uh, if you want to ask questions, I'll try to answer, but I'm gonna to defer to Steve now. Well, I, and, and thanks Carlton, that, that was very helpful. Um, I think other things that we talked about um, that in regards to the historical commission, um, in like what types of mitigation was would, would take place. Um, seeing that like uh, the dam is being, uh, some of the things are being removed and when they're removed, they're, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're just gone. Um, the, some of the things that were brought up that um, we can look at is um, signage in the new, in, in the new space, site, like um, making sure that there's not only like, um, signage of for wayfinding but also signage for like historical elements of the of the park um talking about not only the the um the history of the the factory but history of like the, the land itself uh, possibly putting together a, a pamphlet or brochure um or the or the um i guess the the new version a website or something uh, like describing the um the site so that just to make sure that the people, that the residents, anyone who goes there knows the history of the site. I think that's um, to be very important just to make sure that it's not like when it's, when the site's re, um, finished and we, and um, the bridge is replaced, um, people know what was there. Um, one person on the, um, on the, um, project they, they have um they have a company um sorry I just want uh the Par public archaeology laboratory out of um providence um and they um have they're not only looking at like the structure the historical um, structures that are on surface but they also uh, someone looking um, below ground looking at um what is um the the whole history of the of the space could be tie into um, um, pre-colonization, looking into what, what what the bridge, what the river, what the that whole area was used for. Um, I think it's um, very important that we document this. Uh, and like, like what Carlton said, we have another meeting coming up next week on Monday um, to discuss um, to keep the conversation going. Um, so I just absolutely 
one of the things I think, and I know Steve Black, who's the uh, uh, steward for the park, wants that, this to happen. He, the thing would be, this is part of the trail system that's trying to be developed, the Emerald Trail or whatever they call it, uh, Mecca-Texas Trail. And that could be a waypoint with the canoe input, those kinds of things. Uh, and the, the designers of the bridge replacement have actually made room for a, a canoe put in, a kayak put in. Um, so the thing I think is that we have one very historic structure on the town highway department land, which is an old storage barn. And that CPC had tried to get it uh, restored. I think David's been involved with it at some level. And what I'd like to see is that become a display area. Uh, it'd be roofed, it would be preserved, and then it be, be, would be built into a waypoint, a stop point uh, recreationally, and also for this historic stuff that Steve's talking about. There's some incredible, I followed it and photographed a lot over the last four years. Uh, there's some incredibly historic elements uh, that are still in place that I think the next generation, not my kids' generation, but the generation after that will lose respect for the incredible workmanship that our 1800s industrial revolution, uh, the colonialists with the bridge. I think we could put a very beautiful display that would attract people to Bridgewater if we really can get the feds and the, and the state to put up enough money to do that. Um, it, it's just, it, you envision that building and having some of the old stones around it so people could see that and maybe reconstructing a small portion of the of the historic part of the uh, bridge that safely put together so people could see the workmanship that's there. And then you can go inside that building and see these historic history and displays, that kind of thing, as well as the normal metal signage that they put in uh, as their normal mitigation. So I'm, I'm really adamant that we get something really positive out of this, what I consider a uh, destruction of history, but you know, it is what it is. And I'm just gonna quickly share my screen right here. Um, people who were on the, um, the um, High Street Dam meeting um, saw this last time, but on my um, Historical Commission Facebook page, I've put together a whole um, photo album of the site. And one thing I, I, I asked at the, um, in their first meeting, um, it seemed as if the um, uh, PAL, the um, Public Archaeology Laboratory, they took a lot of their information from the previous consultant. And they had a lot of written information, a lot of written documents, but they didn't have a lot of um, actual um, images or um, of what the space was or, uh, or the history of it. So I shared this with with them. Um, and this, like what Carlton says, like th this goes through the historical sites of the buildings, the, the um, really kind of like- Steve, go back to, because over, let's see, go back one more. Over on the right, there's a, a building with two windows right there. I believe that's the storage building that we, uh, I would like to have preserved. Yes, I believe you're correct on that one. But what, what an operation that was going on there. The monitor, steel for the monitor, it just, it's an incredible history. It is, it, it, was, it was one of the largest um, iron factories in the, in the country. I think it was like either one or two. Um, Steve, I I could talk for hours on this, but I only want to I only want to say one thing. I I I think Colin's suggestions, the pie in the sky. I would love to see that preservation of that building. I'll do anything I can to help with that effort. But at the very least, we should insist on some type of shoring for those gable ends. Mm -hmm. with the heavy construction, the trucks, the heavy equipment that's going to be going back and forth in the area of that building, uh, we should insist that that building precautions be taken to keep those gable ends from deteriorating. 
I have actually, you know, the Stanley company owned property there, the Stanley Works. Yeah. You know, they may have some money that they would contribute. And, and I asked in my email to Michael, I asked to, that if we could get the Stanley company to uh, interest. They rebuilt the dam in 1904. Uh, and it's, it's just, I think it's really important that we can engage other people that may have money. And the Stanley company is, I think, appropriate. And I know because the research I've done is there is down in Philadelphia, and I forget the name of it, but there's a library that apparently has all the archives from this. Uh, by the way, that last picture, two pictures ago, that was the, in the 2004 newspaper article on the dam rebuild, it was called the most modern electrical generation plant in the area. And, and, and you go back one more, two more. Ah. It, it's, it was the one that you saw a building and there was a big, that one. That's, that, uh, there were two of those uh, devices in there that, that generated electricity for the plant starting in 1904. Mm. I've been to the museum in Philly. It's the Swedish American Historical Society. And they have the, uh, some information on Ericsson's contracts with the, uh, with, with the foundry. I had a little trouble finding them because they're listed under the uh, uh, Lazelle Penkins company. Right. And that's why they never heard of them. Uh, but with, with some research, we were able to find it. But we've, I, at, at the very least, we've got to get those cable ends supported. They've, they've been like that for, for 15 years, and that wood is going to, it's, it's on the way out. And yeah. I also had a uh, seminar there uh, with the American. Uh, industrial society there probably about 20 years ago when the roof was still on the building and members of PAL and Mass Historical were there at the time and we spent a lot of time inside uh, documenting the roof structure and they did some drawings. I have those drawings so that roof structure could be reproduced uh, very easily. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned the museum because I do, I do think that the historical researchers may or may not have thought of that in terms of their historical research. Hey, look at there's a Washburn. I'm a oh. Washburn. And you see right there in the middle that says dam 1697. There's a 1700s document that suggests that the bridge was built by 1727. Well, the, the, the ironworks were operating, I think, in 1713, because if you go through the probate court records, you'll find that uh, I believe it's David Perkins talks about one of his heirs, a son who was blinded in an explosion of a mold at the dam. Hmm. 1713. So I think they went to the legislature in 1695, but uh, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> Well, that, that's the yeah, David Gilman, the historian, <laughs> helping the historians do the work. I have deeds going back to 1690 for David Perkins. Yeah. So, I mean, it just proves how, how important it is to make sure that that history is preserved. And there's also a bridge that was down in, up in the West Bridgewater area called Comfort Willis. Comfort Willis's bridge, mm -hmm. and it spanned the river, and it probably was in place in 17, uh, early 1700s, at least, certainly by the 1720. And that the remnants of that are still in the river, and once the river starts to flow faster, the, that structure may erode. So there's tons of history here um, that we need to look at. I'm especially interested in the indigenous population's history. Absolutely. Uh, I just had to mention one thing. I think she may have just jumped off, but um, uh, Sherry Anderson, our other committee member, was she was on, but she wasn't able to communicate, and she was able and she agreed with the um, memorial building comments. So we had full five uh, approval on that. Um, so I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that she was on. She was on for that conversation. Um, 
No, I, I think that um, what we'll do, what I'll do is each um, historical commission meeting, I'll um, keep uh, keep bringing an update to the commission so that everyone's aware of what's going on. All right. Um, after this, uh, I think uh, we discussed this a little bit more. The the CPC public forum. Um, we just uh, it was scheduled for um, the twenty fourth of this month. Um, it's now been pushed back to the uh, to March. Unfortunately, we could due to scheduling or um, uh, announcement issues. It's got moved back to March twenty fourth. Um, this will be a, like a public forum where historic preservation is is absolutely essential part of the um, CPA or CPC. Um, so I think what we can do is um, now I'll just kind of announce that that's going to be um, coming up, but I'd also possibly by next um, meeting, which will be before that meeting, we can um, discuss what may uh, what we may want to present if people have questions about historical preservation for the meeting. Um, I don't know if anyone has any comments about that, Gina. If you want to, um, had any ideas? I I do, Steve. Thank you for for mentioning that. I apologize that we had to had to postpone it a month. Uh, if you could come, you put on your thinking caps and come up with ideas. What we're looking for is input from the public and different committees and commissions uh, on how to utilize um, CPC funds. Uh, in this case, historic preservation. If you have thoughts on housing or open space or recreation, feel free to to bring those along too. Um, so as many of you that could attend, uh, it would be great. The CPC is having their regular meeting next Wednesday, the 24th. Um, I know it's in conflict with our, our ZBA also. Uh, so I hope you can jump on for a little bit. And I'd like to add for the stone building at um, Stanley Ironworks, um, CPC, some of you know this, CPC had awarded, oh, sluzy years ago, um, a grant to, to shore that up. The company started, never came back. Um, we ended up, CPC ended up recalling the money back from the, the town. So if anybody has any suggestions or contractors that could shore it up, I, I agree, it definitely needs to be done. Just, just very quickly, um, also I would say anybody that hasn't read the community preservation uh, five-year plan that was just uh, approved last spring, uh, read the historical for this group. Read the historical section. See what is going on. And I would ask Michael or or Kim uh, if whether or not we can actually get a hold of some of the actions that the town's working on for the master plan for that meeting. It it, it really would help the public to understand what the master plan is trying to go, where it's trying to go to in terms of actions. I, I think it's uh, quite frankly, I think it's past time that the town see some of this. Yeah, I think that uh, that should uh, mesh well with the release timing. So I think that that's definitely possible. We can set up a schedule. We can actually, you know, if you you or CED chair uh, chair, let me uh, director wants to present some things or have their consultant, if you have the funds for that, I think it would be really helpful for about a ten minute uh, primer on on that document from our three areas of interest. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Thank you. I think that would be good. Great. Um, actually, the, the, Michael, while, while we I have you on, on the um, in the meeting, um, it's not on the agenda, but I, um, I wanted to ask you a question about the um, if you there's been any updates on the um, the town hall feasibility study. I, I, I actually, <clears throat> that's a good question, Steve. I got that, uh, I think yesterday, so I haven't even had a chance to open it, but uh, I plan probably tonight I'll open it up and circulate it to everybody. 
All right, so you can see that. So, yep, finally. Excellent. Good to see that going again. Yeah. All right, so maybe like for next meeting, we'll have a, a I can um, have an update for the commission about um, the progress on that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And I think that, um, last thing on the discussions, um, this is uh, about the historical commission storage. Um, I guess right right now the historical historical commission has um, storage in the um, uh, on Perkins Street in the in the warehouse. Um, there's I guess there was a um, Angelo D'Amelia who owns the building had had a, an agreement with the historical commission. Um, there's been some word of um, that building being um, having a new owner, um, and that we're going to um, need it. Uh, so. Um, David, could, could you speak to that a little bit more? What you know, what steps we need, need to make? David, uh, I don't know if you heard my question. If um, do you know who uh, um, any more information on the um, uh, on the story? Um, and what will need to be done? To, um, talk, is somebody talking on this topic, Steve? What's that? Is somebody talking about answering your question? No, I, I was asking. I was asking you if the. It, um... Oh, oh! I thought you said Steve. Okay. Uh, yeah, Angelo called me about two weeks ago, saying that he's got to buy it for the building, uh, and that uh, we either have to empty our uh, contents out, probably sixty to ninety days after the deal goes through or we sit down and negotiate <clears throat> with the uh, new owners. Uh, I would like to do that first, but I would actively at this point come up with a, a backup plan. If, right. we have to, if, if we got to get rid of that, get that stuff out of there, we need a place to put it. So uh, it's something we've got to be thinking of. Okay. Angelo didn't give me any uh, time frame as far as passing or when the deal is going to close. Um, so, um, Okay. Yeah. Um, is that something that you'd be able to um, to communicate with uh, Angela to see, like, if he can give you uh, give you the con the the new um, owner's contact information? Uh, yeah, I can get that. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll have to if not like we're, we're gonna have to find a new location for that space and um obviously with uh, memorial building not having um as much uh, display space and storage we're gonna have to find we'll, we'll have to might have to be creative as to where where we can uh, relocate it if we have to relocate it. Let's get that roof on that storage building right now. Uh, is there room in the highway barn for some of that stuff? Uh, no. Highway. No, highway, the highway van, I've, I've tried to store things down there in the past and they just don't have any secure places. Uh, and the old highway van, uh, I wouldn't want to set foot in. It's, it's scheduled for demolition. Um, I think worse comes to worse. Uh, we got to look at the basement of the town hall. <laughs> town hall, not the academy building. Yeah. Yeah, it's been cleaned out fairly well. Yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll keep that discussion going. Um, and uh, I guess right now, if there's anyone from the public or anyone who has any other comments that that weren't discussed, any new 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 items that they want to discuss, I'll open that up. I guess not. Um, so I guess. Uh, it's a little bit longer meeting than usual, but I, I think it was a very good meeting. I appreciate everyone being here. Um, I think that um, we'll we'll go back to our um, third to third Tuesday of next um, third Tuesday of the month for next month's meeting. I'm almost done, but it's cold anyway. Um, other than that, um, I just said do a motion to adjourn. If someone wants to second that motion. I'll second. Okay. All right. Um,
for insurance. Thanks everyone for this. This is great. And I will talk to you all soon. Thank you. Hey, good night. Stay safe. Bye. Yeah. Really?